It is a chilly October evening here and now. It's always October, always evening, always chilly. Legend has it that before I came here, I dwelt elsewhere, in the other place, in a different month. Which month was it? I can't for the life of me remember what the place I came from looked like. What it felt like, what it sounded like, smelled like. Why I was there. Why I didn't stay, why I departed for this place, and how. Which month was it? Who else was in the other place, I wonder. Was I happy there? Why does this feel like a punishment? What if? Does that place even exist? Was I really there? No memories here and now, only vaguely unsettling feelings, like having a foul taste in my soul's mouth. The uncanny. This place, here and now. How the hell did I get here? When? Why? I just can't wrap my head around it. Why am I here? What's this place? No idea, only. Here and now strange vibrations run up my spine and sing me a song of a painful journey behind me, sing me a song of a treacherous road ahead of me. No recollections, no plans, only the damn uneasiness that won't leave me. It is a chilly October evening here and now. It's always October. No knowledge of here and now, no instructions, no manuals, no guided tours, no. Nothing, just this place. Here and now. The hum. Incessant. What do I do here and now? How long have I been here and now? Am I really here and now? How long do I have to stay here and now? How fucking long? Not a clue. It feels so lonely here and now. It's cold, very cold, and too noisy and dark. It is a chilly October evening here and now. It's always October. This place, damn it. Is this place even real? Does this place exist only in my mind? Does my mind exist only in this place? Fluorescent visual echoes glow a faint green color. Harrowing phantasms inhabit this realm. It is a chilly October evening here and now. It's always October. This place feels like nowhere and ever. I perceive everything, yet it's pitch black. This place, luminous absence of light. I can see it with my eyes, not with my heart. It is a chilly October evening here and now. It's always October. Nothingness engulfs me, its gelid tendrils probe the surface of my skin, but can't penetrate. Nothingness can't obliterate what I am. And that's because I am. I'm in a land of ephemeral visions. This place, an incalculable multitude of deceptively seductive shapes Deluded pseudo-beings, euphoric meta-shadows. Feverishly dancing all together in a splendid darkness. To the lifeless tune of a depraved architect. The dreary tune of this abhorrent construct. An agonizing dance of tormented silhouettes, powerless to quit. A hideous, distorted, sickening, rhythmic hum. A grotesque scene. This place. A hellish vivarium. A sadistic fantasy, populated with meaningless simulacra, copies of copies of copies of copies. The hum, it is, no, I won't join the dance, no way. Not in a million years. The eternal dance of dead things. The horror. I don't belong here and now. I'm a castaway. And there must be others like me in this place, other castaways, those who don't belong. I want to find the others. I need to find them, and they need to find me. Communication. I write in my journal, note to self, castaways send out messages in bottles. 
It is a chilly October evening here and now. It's always October. I'm on the rooftop of a skyscraper. I stand on the ledge, look out over the city, feel the wind on my face, a leap of faith is one step away. A desperate measure, my ill-founded idea of a message in a bottle. I hesitate. There's something. The maze shifts. In my head a music box plays a distorted tune. I wind up in a gloomy alley. I see writings and drawings on a crumbling brick wall. Chronicles of perilous journeys south. Through the darkened regions. Unknown heroes in search for the edge of this capricious world. Their stories have reached me like messages in bottles. I've found the others at last. Those who don't belong. And they have found me. I leave my scribbles on the wall. My message in a bottle, floating in time, waiting to be unsealed. Spiritual connection. Exchange of living knowledge. In this place, alas, togetherness is a misbelief. For each of us is on a different voyage, across oceans of sorrow, alone. It is a chilly October evening here and now. It's always October. Who's gonna wake me up from this bad dream? I'm a pilgrim in a hostile land. A land that tries to change me, in vain. What's my destination? I don't give a shit anymore. Nothing fucks you over harder than your futile search for purpose. Nothing heals you like the frightening act of letting go, consciously. The liberating acceptance of being lost in a shifting maze. The only way to find the exit, the only way. It is a chilly October evening here and now. It's always October, always will be, always has been. I take a walk. In the rain. I'm on my own. Tonight the streets appear completely deserted in this part of town. There's a secluded bench under a large, leafless tree. I go have a seat. A lamppost nearby gives off a dim yellow light. And the leafless tree casts its shadow on the pavement, and the shadow has leaves. As I sit, I watch the raindrops fall. They keep falling insistently, hitting the ground, forming ripples in a large puddle by the bench. All of a sudden, I start hallucinating. A clock strikes thirteen at midnight, and puts an end to my lucid nightmare. A clock strikes thirteen at midnight, and frees my mind from its jail. A clock strikes thirteen at midnight, and saves my soul. It's the clock in the tower of St. Brendan's Church. A clock with no hands, a tower with no clock, a church with no tower. I stand up, the bench morphs into an owl and flies away. Ephemeral visions. The things to come are formless, timeless. Eternity is here and now. Eternity is an instant. Eternity is a lie. I must find a way out. To a yod nift I. I must find a way. Yod nift I. I must find a. A nift I. I must find. Nift I. I must. Samai. I. A fake world, where everything's fake. The meaninglessness of all things. Suffering is fake. Except it's not. Pain isn't really there. Except, one's got no choice but to experience it. It hurts so bad, yet it's fake, and yet it hurts so bad. This place, cruel by design. Unjustifiable torture. Trying to get far away from the continuous, dreadful rumble of the masses of passionless artifacts. I cover my ears and run, and run and run and run, panting, delirious, shoeless, till I end up in a transient garden, a cellar door, primordial, secret, concealed, swallows me, and, down in this catacomb, an immense dazzling void, a distressing silence, 
a black sky above an endless frozen lake. Time turned into space. It feels warm beneath my bare feet. As I trudge along through these icy, liminal fields. The liminal fields. Living information. The way to the Omega. The Omega is a leap of faith. From the edge of a frozen oblivion. I'm on a mission. Alone. A bizarre apparition before my eyes. I stop in my tracks. A strange encounter. Who are they? I'm surrounded, firmly subjugated. They speak. They're the guardians of the gate and are doomed to never leave this place. Hooded priests encircle me. Their chant is incomprehensible to me. I fall to my knees. Hooded priests draw near to me. I feel at peace. I lie on the ground. Hooded priests anoint me head to toe with a thick black oil, the sacred goo. Memories come flooding back. I'm from a place where it's always April, always morning. Always sunny and warm. The monk with the skeleton face, who sits in the high throne, looks me in the eye. The monk with the skeleton face, who sits in the high throne, dissects my soul. The monk with the skeleton face, who sits in the high throne, points the way. His curiosity satiated. The ancient rite of passage is over. I get up, the priests morph into owls and fly away, and, in a flash, I find myself standing at the very edge of this counterfeit reality, gazing into the blackness of the abyss, and then, then, I take the leap, a leap of faith, here and now. And in the blink of an eye, this place is no more. There is no here, there is no now. I am where and when I am. The blissful caress of a noiseless new world wakes me up, gently. All around me is the infinite purity of an amorphous, sentient reality, like a magnificent block of marble, ready to be sculpted. And I am the sculptor, sublimed by the spirit of the ultimate revelation. I make all the difference, where and when I am. I'm the thirteenth stroke of the clock. I create space and time anew, devoid of darkness. I create the living knowledge from which life arises. I create the universe that's outside my window. And, in that universe, it's April again.